Right, welcome <laughs> to the quest for Jetty, where we wait for Etch to wake up from beauty sleep. And join us to record the uh, actual episode of this podcast. I mean, it's not even going to be like a proper episode of your podcast, because I'm just going to slap it on my channel. You can post it if you like, I, nah, but I was I, just going <laughs> to stick a little crappy JPEG image <laughs> of like your... Uh, What's of her dinosaur and your um I don't know some anime babe? Yes. What is your av? Oh, right now. Yeah. What is your avatar? I never know what it is, but you usually seem to have like the same theme of like some small child. Uh, it's it's always some kind of anime character from Umineko that is turned into a fucking gremlin because that is my fucking aesthetic. <laughs> you are the trash gremlin. <laughs> I am the trash gremlin. I mean, this... I do not actually have one of those friends, or at least, like, not as a direct friend, but somebody that I knew from my, um... Well, I went to middle school there, and to high school there, and to A-levels, which is, like, super high school in Britain. Yeah, that's the there. That's the one before college, right? That's as far as I can tell? As far as I know? Uh, that's the one before university, yes. Mm. But, like, A-Levels is at a sixth form college. So, technically, we're going to a college before we go to your equivalent of college. Oh. It's it's kind of weird. Like, it's the years where you don't ever have to wear uniform and, like, everybody's kind of awkward and starts getting piercings and stuff. Do your colleges have uniforms? No, no, no. Like, our... What's... uh Colleges don't. Oh, but, like, high it's, schools do. Uh, but, like, high schools can. Oh. So, like, GCSEs, the things that you take before A-levels that people care about when you want to apply for university and stuff, they can have, like, your GCSEs and stuff. Mine were all done in uniform. Oh. Like the same uniform that all the middle schoolers are wearing and stuff. And it can be weird, especially in, like, schools where you have a spread of ages. We've got, like, people that have just turned 13 and are, like, four foot next to, like, <laughs> six foot people from the year below them and stuff. It's weird. It's so weird. Uh, here in the States, we just call out the horrors of eighth grade. <laughs> Ugh, Ash, I swear to I... God. I swear to God. You better wake up soon. <laughs> No, we're going to have, like, a full out, like, <laughs> honestly, I think, like, my plan is that we can just, like, go at this for, like, 30 minutes or something, and then I'll just be like, okay, look, it's getting close to midnight, and, you know, like, we can do a super I've been out, I've watched Howard the Duck tonight, I've got, like, stuff to be getting on with, you know? <laughs> <sighs> Oh my god. So like for refer refer for reference anyone who is uh listening in uh a local theater this night was running Howard the Duck the 1986 movie. It was amazing. It was legit amazing. Um but, Have you ever okay. done have, have you seen The Room? Uh, I've No, I've not seen The Room. Oh. But I know of it. It's not that sort of amazing. It's like no, no, but no. Jet so seeing the room versus seeing the room at a local movie theater that's putting it on at midnight when people are drunk and doing callbacks is a completely different experience, and that's all I'm gonna say. Hmm. Now, apparently, I've heard the same thing about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes, I have actually never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show a on its own and b sober. <laughs> I have never seen that movie sober. Holy shit. I think every time I've seen it, I was fucking blasted. See, now, I got shown it, like, sober when I was, like, 17 or something, and it was very much not my thing. It was just sort of like, ha, this is kitschy. I don't, I don't even I'd rather be watching Doctor Who, thank you. I don't even remember, like... I'm gonna go that... try and get into Sea Dread while wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. Going to where? And khaki shorts. What's it? Um, my dad tried to sneak me and my brother into Sea Dread. Oh, like, oh, oh. The movie theater attendant was like, 
both of your kids there are wearing khaki shorts and Doctor Who shirts. <laughs> no, the, no, they aren't getting in. <laughs> is is that is that a thing that attendants do? Like, I've never had. Okay, I I snuck in to watch a couple of R-rated films before I was seventeen, and the the attendants did not give a shit. Like, we were we were obviously not of age. They they didn't give a shit about us. We just walked right in. Then again, the movie I was watching was Takers, and that was honestly one of the worst movies I'd ever seen in my life, so maybe that was why. They're like, we're going to ruin this kid's day. Yeah, but I thought that's like... I don't know, American and... There's something so fundamentally weird and different about British and American towns and cultures and stuff. I imagine it's the big Atlantic Sea. (laughs) No, no, no. <laughs> you have a very big country, and it's yes. something that you can notice as well going to like continental Europe a lot of the times, is that it's built with an understanding that land is plentiful and there is lots of it. And it sort of goes out wide, whereas there's this natural tendency to just clump and cluster in Britain where they shove everything close. Like, I don't know, I've lived in a few semi-detached houses because I move around a fair bit. And like, it's always this neighborhood where it's just like, yeah, well, we can fit slightly more in if you share one wall with the neighbors. I think that's just, I think that's just like, if you ever live in like big cities, I think big cities here do that too. Nah, like, I'm not talking cities, I'm talking towns, towns and stuff. I'm talking rural areas. No. I'm talking a town where there's, like, next to no nightlife or, like, anything. Like, I think there is a subway and a Domino's, and that's about it on the high street. The rest is all charity shops. <laughs> I think I've, I've been to, like, one of those kind of towns, but that was in Canada. That was literally in, like, fucking nowhere Canada. They had one restaurant and one general store, and that was it. It was weird. I drove around at, like, 11 p.m., and, I don't know, it felt like a setting for a horror movie. Rural areas are... I love driving through rural areas. Like, driving through the Midwest, I love that. I don't think I could live there. I might have. I I would have to like, die maybe. Oh, are you sure you wouldn't like just have to like hit your head and get turned into somebody's wife, Sweet Home Alabama stuff? That's not Sweet Home Alabama. What? That really isn't. I'm getting it confused with a completely different movie, aren't I? The sweet. I thought Sweet, sweet Home Alabama is a song. I'm pretty sure. No, there is a film called Sweet Home Alabama that I constantly confuse with another song say, it's Leonard with S- a hunky dude in the Midwest. No, Sweet Home Alabama isn't even the Midwest, in the South. Sweet Home Alabama is featuring Rural Reese America. Witherspoon. Wow. That's a name I haven't seen in a while. Reese Witherspoon. What has she, what has she done? <laughs> like, since... Oh, apparently she's known for... This 2014 artsy-looking film. I know her... What's it called? uh, Wild. Wild. Apparently, uh, she is going to be reprising her role in Legally Blonde 3. So, you know. Excited for that. (laughs) (laughs) She was in Walk the Line? Huh. How old is her character in the Legally Blonde film? series then <laughs> I, I i don't know <laughs> I, I mean like because there's gonna be there's gotta be sequels legally blonde so two, legally blonde two, legally blonde 2 was it or is set after they graduated i know how that. many years afterwards was it like how believable was it that it was just after they graduated i have no idea <laughs> Like is this sort all of right, like? Let's look. Let's look at. Buffy. Let's, We're all still in high school. Let's look at the uh, IMDb page for uh, Legally Blonde two. Let me see if we can find a uh, synopsis. Um. 
you do that, I'm going to continue to stick, like, a hundred fucking gold cards in gold sleeves, <laughs> because I'm that sort of silly person. <laughs> Oh. oh, so apparently Legally Blonde 2 is about Elle Woods after her graduation as a Harvard lawyer uh, going down to Washington to get a bill passed to oppose animal testing. It's great that she voices all these important concerns that <laughs> are so relevant to our times. <laughs> Budget was a forty estimated forty five million. Opening weekend domestic was twenty two million, but worldwide gross was one twenty four million. So that's not too bad. According to according to this, all of best thing to come out of Legally Blonde has to be the musical. Oh, I love the musical. They're right there. Look at that tan, well-tinted skin. Look at the killer shape he's in. Look at that slightly stubbly chin. No, please, he's gay. Totally gay. I'm, I'm getting recommended I'm... all these fucking other movies. More like, the more like this section underneath Legally Blonde 2 is amazing, because I'm seeing stuff like Miss Congeniality, and then Miss Congeniality 2. I didn't even know there was a Miss Congeniality 2. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, I didn't know there was Miss Congeniality 1. Okay, Miss Congeniality See, like, was... My understanding of Miss Congeniality is entirely rooted in the understanding that Miss Congeniality 2 is a thing. <laughs> like, I've seen trailers for Miss Congeniality 2. I've never seen anything promoting the existence of the first. Wait, how, so are you serious? It's only logical that there has got to be a sec. There is a second and no first. <laughs> Miss Congeniality was the film that launched Sandra Bullock into, like national view i guess yeah congrats i don't give a shit about like a lot of film actors like i do not know celebrities oh, at the best of times that's, that's more than fair i don't know a lot of them i just know sandra bullock because what uh, she i prefer what else does she i do? almost prefer when it's like a an actor that's almost like irrelevant that you can remember and suddenly like it changes your experience of the film. Like, um... Did you watch The Green Room? No. Oh, oh, I, okay. You heard yes, of it? yes, I do know that movie. Yes. You know, with Patrick yeah, yeah, Stewart yeah, 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 the Nazi. Yeah, 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 Patrick Stewart yeah. the Nazi. Okay, so that film, the protagonist, is the same actor as Kyle Reese from Terminator Salvation. And he still can't hold a fucking shotgun. Joe... Joe Roll? It's not Anton Yelchin. Because that was... That's the new uh, Chekhov from Star, uh, New Star Trek. Well, he's also dead, but... Yeah, it's not... Chekhov or the actor? Uh, Yelchin, the actor, is dead. He died super early, 27. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, he's known for Chekhov and Star Trek, Pat in the Green Room. Uh, wait, wh which one is, uh, which one's the, this guy's the... Right, now you're going to make me actually no. open up. No, I'm just looking, which one is the, the, the Terminator kid? Look, I'm just going to type in Terminator Salvation. In IMDb. IMBD, because I can't <laughs> type. Uh, it says Christian Bale is John Con Oh! Wait, Anton Yelchin was Kyle Reese? I did not know that. But I also didn't watch Salvation, because... You've not watched Salvation? No. But it's the worst one! <laughs> exactly! You absolutely watch it! I watched Terminator 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, oh I've watched up God, to Rise of the Machines. you've missed out on... Well, yeah, Rise of the Machines is obviously going to get you to stop watching Terminator films. <laughs> but you shouldn't stop watching Terminator films there, because they only get dumber. And dumber. It's great. Oh my God. I, I heard Genesis was like, horrible. 
oh, Genesis is amazing, because, like, they have they do Terminators 1 to 3 all in one go. What do you mean by, like, they just go through those plots? Okay, so the plot of Terminator Salvation is, uh, Terminator Genesis is, you start the plot of, well, no, uh, it starts with a really crazy Terminator Salvation style, like, let's actually show you a fight in the future thing in full blow. Okay. Wait, but I thought it was better when we just, like, had, like, a few dramatic shots of it. No, no, let's have a full fight scene in the future. And you take this full fight scene in the future, and this leads up to, like, okay, now we're going to send Kyle Reese back in time, but... Oh, something spooky just happened to John Connor in the future. What? Oh, no! But Kyle Reese goes back in time. So that's, term- that's T2. And the Terminator that sent back... Well, no, no, that's T1. Is Kyle Reese is sent back in time to, like, stop the Terminator. But Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator from the first Terminator is killed by Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator. <laughs> Before he can even steal a jacket. You know, that way you can tell him apart. And Kyle Reese is attacked by the Terminator from Terminator 2. Amelia Clark is... Only to be saved by Sarah Connor. Jai Courtney is in this film. <laughs> what the f- Why are there so many big name actors in Terminator Genesis? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you have to- It's such a- Do you want big name actors? Do you want to know who they got to play Skynet? Who? Matt Smith. Oh, I remember that! I remember seeing that clip because I was like, holy shit, that's Matt Smith! The 11th Doctor <laughs> pretending to be American is the villain of Terminator Genesis. No, but like, look, okay, so obviously you have Arnold, but that's, ob- like, obviously you have that because it's fucking Terminator. Then yes. you have Amelia Clark, who is huge. Jai Courtney, who is huge. J.K. Simmons is in this movie. Yes, J.K. Simmons plays a bit part as some cop who is in the past and the future. Matt Smith is Alex as Matt Smith. Um, Matt Smith is... Matt Smith is Skynet. (laughs) That's so stupid. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a Terminator who's secretly Skynet. But he's sent from the future future to turn John Connor into a Terminator so he can go back in time and terminate his parents. This is the future God intended. (laughs) (laughs) It's the best one! It's the best worst one that hasn't happened to you yet. (laughs) Is this on Netflix? (laughs) I don't know, I just bought it on, like, Blu-ray. I've watched it, like, two or three times now. It's legit got some decent action in it, because the Terminator's some weird, like, indestructible hyperphase alloy that can, like go through solid objects and stuff. Oh, it's not on Netflix, but now it's recommending I watch a Solo, a Star Wars story. <sighs> Just because you want to watch one prequel doesn't mean <laughs> you want to watch another prequel. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, if you really want, like, The Terminator, but dumber, um, I, I, I my favorite Ascending. stupid film I've discovered recently was... Um, so there's this place in Britain called CEX. They have one in almost every town now. It, it's called it used to be Entertainment Exchange. It used to be uh, in America too, but all the CEXs I know closed down. Right. Well, basically, um, I found a film called 2035 Forbidden Dimensions, and the only description it gave itself was like Terminator meets. Mad Max. All right, so this is IMDb, and this is the this is the summary. Okay, Jack Slade was born during a solar eclipse in the year 1980. 18 years later, he finds out he has the ability to travel into the future. He projects himself into the year 2035, where society has been destroyed by a fascist regiment of psychopathic doctors that rule the wastelands, creating D4 mutants with a serum synthesized from the flesh of dead aliens. Now Slade must travel back to the year 1998 to destroy a device known as the Wavelength Generator, which opened the dimensional gateways to these alien beings. With the help of an army of female outlaws and a sleazy detective, Slade reconnects with a star child... K- Khadija, who holds the key to stop Khadija. Khadija. 
okay, who holds the key to stopping these tragic events from ever taking place. There's like three different genres in here. <laughs> So we got time travel. We got. I'm ninety percent convinced that it's also all secretly a trans allegory or something. Who directed this? Christopher James Miller. Uh, he. The budget is five cents. It's filmed at a fringe festival in the United States for all the post-apocalypse scenes. Okay, this this uh, director was known for playing Picard's nephew on Star Trek Generations. What? <laughs> that it's literally on this IMDb page. <laughs> That's what he's known as. <laughs> what? What is the? Are you serious? What the budget being like? <laughs> this was made on a thirty-five thousand dollar budget. Let me see the trailer for this. Go one second. Uh, forbidden dimensions. Let me see the trailer for this. I, I want to see. I want to see what 35 grand is going to get you. This literally just looks like footage from The Burning Man. <laughs> what is this acting? What the fuck? What? What the fuck is that thing? Oh my god. <laughs> that robot is horrifying. Ah, uh, great acting. Woman who looks like a porn star in that leather outfit. <laughs> That's just a green goblin mask. <laughs> okay. You know what this main character looks like? It looks he looks like um the Days of Future Past Quicksilver. That's what those goggles are reminding me of right now. See, I just thought he was so meant to be, like, somebody's, like, you know, edgy... Edgy self-insert? Sort of <laughs> but that's actually, you know, his character throughout the film as well. Just, he's like an... <laughs> no, he's like some confused dude. Like, he's not much of a badass. He just keeps, like, bumbling his way out of danger. Is constantly rescued by like all the women in his life and stuff, and then he needs to die at the end in order to like protect the savior and stuff. Uh, spoilers for anybody that wanted to go see Twenty Thirty Five Forbidden Dimensions. Where the hell am I? Twenty Thirty Five. That's a reasonable answer, I... right there. <laughs> Where the hell am I? 20, 30. 30 on a Friday night. <laughs> That's true. Oh my god, Edge. Please. <laughs> Please. Where are you going? Uh, I'm 1140. 1140. Oh <laughs> this has replaced... Uh, I suppose this does give people a much better understanding of me. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's there's not there's not going to be any more interview questions. I'm going to be like, you know, based on what we just discussed about your IMDb adventures, <laughs> I think I understand. IMDb adventures. I don't use IMDb. I use CEX. <laughs> the only true way to understand a film is to read the back of a box and go, <laughs> this sounds so fucking stupid. <laughs> oh. There's, like, I showed my brother 2035, and he spent the entire hour and a half run time going, how long is this? Oh film? my god. I'm crying. The top billed actress on 2035 is a porn star. It's a porn star. She's a porn star known as Busty Britney, uh, starring in great movies like Tit to Tit in 1991, and, um, What's another great one here? The Boob Cage 2. Uh, <laughs> Boobsville Cabaret. Uh, <laughs> girls Who Take It Up The Ass 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what she started doing for like the 14 years between oh, 1980 and 2035. Now look at, let's look at the second build actor called Carl Crew, who played Pastor John. Um... Oh, he's known for a 
documentary on Jeffrey Dahmer. Huh. Okay. That's actually... Which one's Jeffrey Dahmer? Uh, the charismatic one that killed women and ate them. Okay, so this this is like an actual actor. Let's go one down. Uh, Amy Daly? Dolly? Also a porn star. Uh, Could these are... Huh. Okay, uh, with great videos like... Amy Dolly, the trans lesbian. And, uh... Forbidden Lovers. IMDb lists porn films? Do you want the link? <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> These exist. Uh, she has a writing credit. Oh, it's Amy Dolly, the trans lesbian. Okay, good to know. Let's keep going down. Christopher James Miller, that's the director. And apparently acted in this film. Okay, let's go down from that to Lisa Thayer. Thayer? Uh, what have you done? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Yep, absolutely nothing. Uh, two wardrobe manager credits, costume and wardrobe department from 97. Uh, a film called Deep Cover in 92. What is this? This looks like... Oh, this is 90 schlock, isn't it? Yep, this is 90 schlock. That's amazing. Wait, is that Lawrence Fishburne? No, it's not. Yes, it is! What? She was in a movie where Lawrence Fishburne has, like, a minor acting role. I just saw him in a photo, and I was like, I know that face anywhere. Is this, like, pre-Matrix Lawrence Fishburne? Yes. Where he played stuff like the janitor in... Is it, like... I swear he's got, like, some role or whatever in Friday the 13th. He has a no. role in Apocalypse Now. Nightmare on Elm Street. He has a role in Apocalypse Now. That's one of the big movies he was in. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was pre-Matrix. 92? Matrix was what? Uh, Matrix 99, yeah. This was pre-Matrix. Alright, let's keep going down the list of... How ironic that the film series we think is the most 90s is really just, like, the most early 2000s. 2000s. <laughs> Alright, uh... Ugh. This guy's billed as the Duct Factory creature. Uh, Stephen Briggs. Uh, like, okay, so the duct factory creature, I'm thinking, is, um, it's like, he's on a mission in order to kill the scientists in charge of destroying the world. So he goes to the duct factory, which I, I don't know what it actually is supposed to be. Like, it could have been a factory where originally they built air ducts or whatever, but basically he walks in and fakes being important. So, like, the guy at the front desk is really frantic, or whatever, with him. And it's... This guy at the front desk looks very much like a Green Goblin dude. Sort of thing. Oh, <laughs> Just creepy mask, hammy acting. Like, a surprising amount of this film of 2035 is... fascinating to watch. I mean, when your top build actress is just a fucking porn star. <laughs> and yeah, I don't even think there was that much objectification of anything other than, like, um... I don't know, I'm gonna be the worst person to ask on stuff like that, because I really don't pay much attention when it comes to anything, like, close to that sort of stuff. I'm looking at these other films that Christopher James Miller has directed. He did another one called Iron Horse in 2010, and it's using all the same actors and actresses. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this is the underground of cinema. Honestly, you know, you gotta diversify. You can't just keep making sequels. Why? Why? Twenty thirty six. I just, I just don't know. Like, how do you go from being in, in fucking pornos with names like "Seduced by a Cougar" twenty two to twenty thirty five Forbidden Dimensions? Like, wh where is the jump in in your career that led to this? Oh my god. 
you gonna alienate any of our audience if they're... <laughs> oh, I was, I was gonna make some cruel joke about cougars or whatever. <laughs> I, I, it completely lost my mind. Ugh. Oh. Jetty! Jetty, are you still asleep? Someone, someone left a review. Uh, two other, I, I can, I'm only gonna quote this line because it's, this is the only important line. Two other movies that are equally bad are The Galaxy Invader, 1985, and Rock and Roll Space Patrol, 2005. So, let's Google both of these. You're on a quest now. Let's Google both of Has these. Have they just left a comment on those films <laughs> saying two other equally bad films? A 2035 sp- <laughs> and Rock and, and Roll Space Patrol. <laughs> it's built trying to trick Google into thinking there's a connection. Okay, so this is the this is the Galaxy Invader. This is the the summary. An alien is hunted by a gang of drunken hillbillies who saw him crash land his spaceship. Uh, that's the only description. Yeah, that's the only description. I kind of want to watch that now. There's, uh, there's no recognizable people. Like, there, there's no like. Let, let's look at a top build actor. See what he's done. Uh, these all look like really schlocky, dumb stuff. Like Night Beast, The Curse of the Screaming Dead, On the Block, Maxim Zool. What the fuck is Maxim Zool? It's like Zool, but when, you know, you max it out. These look... When was this made? 1991. This looks like... Wait, Adam West was in this movie? Whoa! Mind blown. (laughs) Literally, this is this is one of the co- this is the cover of the DV of the VHS or whatever. It's Adam West parentheses star of TV's Batman is back to fight a new kind of evil from an ancient world. <laughs> we are we are <laughs> journeying through a lot of things here. Okay, so here's my favorite film that people. A lot of people refuse to believe is real if you tell them about it. It's called The Incredible Mr. Limpet. The Incredible Mr. What? Incredible Mr. Limpet. Yeah. Uh, it comes up. Give. It comes up as a thing. Read. Yeah, yeah. Just, just read the description from IMDb. 1964. Please. Meek and mild mannered bookkeeper Henry Limpet has few passions in life. It's mid 1941, and he would love to join the late. Yeah, and he would love to join the navy, but has been rated 4F. His friend George Stickle is in the la- is in the navy and lays it on pretty thick. If Henry could have one thing, it would be to become a fish. <laughs> While on a visit to Coney Island, Henry falls in the water and miraculously gets his wish. Now a fish, he makes friends, Ladyfish and Krusty the Hermit Crab, and loves his new life. He also uses his abilities to help the U.S. Navy locate and sink Nazi U-boats, forcing the Germans to create a new weapon to deal with the Allies' secret weapon. When years later, the Navy finds intelligent activity among the dolphins, they may also know who was teaching them. Uh, <laughs> my brother spent five years thinking I made up that film and that it didn't exist. 1964. Refused to Google it. Refused to acknowledge it. <laughs> Thought I was making some elaborate joke. Let's let's okay. You know what, Don Knotts. Let's see what else you've acted in. Okay, let's let's take a look at your page. Is this the incredible Mr. Limpet himself? Yes. Okay, let's see. Was he typecast as a fish who fights Nazis? Okay, he was best known for being on The Andy Griffith Show. Which, that's actually a pretty famous show, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, The Andy Griffith Show was a pretty famous show. And then he was also in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Uh, But these are all, like, minor roles. He's in Pleasantville, Three's Company. What are you very known for let's see no no he was in Hermie a common caterpillar I beg your pardon okay I only know that this 
these movies exist because do you know uh, an account for furry things on Cauldron? Yeah, I know Anna. Okay. I've like interviewed Anna and baited for what's it? Uh, the furry <laughs> fic that will never get written any more of. I am on your beta server. I know these things. <laughs> it is not forthcoming. So Anna, at some point, went on this crazy live blog about this fucking movie called Hermie a Common Caterpillar and like <laughs> he was like half delirious while he was fucking live blogging this shit and apparently this man Don Knotts Mr. Limpet himself voiced Wormy from this movie <laughs> I thought the caterpillar's name was Hermie yes and his best friend is Wormy Wait, Ladybug was voiced by Melissa Disney. Are are you the Disney? I don't think so. The Disney. <sighs> what the fuck am I witnessing? I'm, I'm gonna go down Don Knotts fucking filmography. Can we please not? <laughs> This was a box of worms unleashed when I mentioned Terminator sequels. <laughs> Terminator Genesis let us here. Salvation let Oh yeah, us Salvation. Here. There is there nothing is no to salvation. be good to receive from Salvation. Ugh. Terminator Salvation. Why did you have to be so dumb? Apparently... So very, very dumb. Apparently not, Don Knotts was also in Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. Do you want to know the lamest thing about Terminator Salvation? What? It's a Terminator fu film set entirely in the future. And guess what nobody has? Robots. Lasers. Uh -oh. There are no lasers in Terminator Salvation. There's laser wire. Oh, okay, I have... Like, some laser fences, but everybody's just shooting guns. I found Don Knotts' most famous role. He voices the mayor in Chicken Little. Mayor Turkey Lurkey. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Chicken Little. I remember watching this movie. <laughs> really enjoying watching this movie. <laughs> uh, you can... It, I think there is so much stupid to go back to in that film. Uh, you know what's an animated movie that I think was super underrated? Meet well, the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons is a film that was, like, its advertising was obnoxious as anything. Oh, yeah. I remember it vividly. <laughs> Me too, I still... <laughs> and then it was allowed to quietly fade out of existence I... as soon as it left cinemas. I still remember the fucking T-Rex. I have a big head and little arms. I still remember that fucking line. <laughs> because of how many times I saw that fucking advertisement. <laughs> He has a big head and little arms. It's a good trailer bait. Oh my god. Like... What is in Meet the Robinsons that's worth re-watching? Like, I don't know, the evil hat future. Where all of humanity has been taken over by the developers of Team Fortress I mean, I actually too. liked uh, the ending to that movie a lot. I thought it was really good. Uh... Why is the top build person on Meet the Robins is Angela Bassett? This is aren't you Rainbow? Aren't you Six from Rainbow Six? Yeah, she she voices Six and was uh, someone in Black Panther. Ramonda. I don't even know who that was. So, Angela Bassett was top build in Meet the Robinsons. That's that's so weird. And then I don't recognize any of these. Oh, this is probably the guy who voiced the kid? Yeah. And then what else has he done? Nothing. He's done nothing after that. After the Meet the Robinsons video game, he has no more credits. Wow. That's... <laughs> That's going quietly into <laughs> the night. That is going quietly into the night. Holy shit. <laughs> we <laughs> shall go quietly into the night. Did... Has that president been in anything else 
quickly. Which president? Shit, I need you which... to look up the president from Independence Day. Oh, Is oh, the president oh. from Independence Day in anything oh, else? Oh, oh, oh. We will not go ahead. Uh, uh, uh. Isn't he like a big actor? Fuck. Uh, Bill Pullman. Um, what else have you done? Bill Pullman was Lone Star in Spaceballs. Ah, no, that's a powerful, that's a powerful role. But that's before... Independence Day. Independence Day, unfortunately, uh, so that doesn't so quite count. Are we checking just what after 1986? Independence Day. Just after 1986. Yes. Uh, let's see if there's any... There, he has a lot of roles. He, he's had a lot of roles, but I don't see any big ones. Uh, I don't see any big ones. Scary Movie 4. Oh, Scary Movie 4. Uh, he was... What's it credit him as in Scary Movie Henry 4? Henry Hale. I don't know. Who, I never watched that movie. Uh, he was in Law & Order SVU. What does it credit him as in Scary Movie Henry 4? Henry Hale, I said. And apparently my mic cut it off for some oh. reason. What role did he play in Scary Movie 4? Henry for? Hale. Oh my god, every time you say it, it's being cut off. This is forbidden information. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. The government doesn't want me to know. <laughs> you want me to just type it out? Oh, Can you read this? Dang it, I just binged all five scary movies recently to very little gain. At all. An entire hour. I can say that the highlight of the entire film series is Brenda. I think I watched Scary Movie 2, and that was it. Best character. Sorry, could you say that again? I think I watched Scary Movie 2, and that was it. Okay, so like, um... Basically, for some reason, Scary Movie... Three, I think. I'm probably going to have gotten this wrong. Scary Movie 3 is Signs plus The Grudge. Okay. As the main plot. Okay. And Brenda's reaction to, like, the creepy girl crawling out of her TV, water dripping off of her, is, Cindy, this bitch <laughs> is messing up my floor! I know that scene. I know that scene, because I've seen that scene before. <laughs> And just a lot of... I love just how much that film is people that get frustrated with her, like, being in the TV and stuff, and just, like, punch her or threaten her. <laughs> okay, so now I'm looking at... Uh, okay, I need to look at the comments on the Galaxy Invader to loop all the way back to see what, how, what comments there are. Wait, this is the one that's got, like, Hillbillies versus... Adam West, yes. right? Oh no, hillbillies, uh, no, okay. an alien being hunted by hillbillies. Yeah, but it, does it have Adam no, West? Adam West was a different one. I, re I forgot where the fuck Adam oh, West fuck. even was from now. <laughs> He's not in this movie. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Adam West is from that other film that got mentioned as being as bad. No, 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 it was a different one because I was diving... Dang it! I was what, deep dive... A different one entirely uh, yeah, I was, from our I train of thought. I was deep diving into someone's IMDb page, and I was just looking at Fuck, random we're going to have to post this video <laughs> before we can find out. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to have to go back and check. Uh, oh my god, there are user reviews. This sort of stupidity is honestly way better than getting drunk tonight. Oh... I've had nothing to drink but water. Oh, uh, th this this one doesn't <sighs> recommend other bad movies. I'm sad. <laughs> well, you just want to get like, <laughs> I, I want to keep TV tropes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to keep jumping to like more and more bad '80s <laughs> movies. Actually, I can't say that because Rock and Roll Space Patrol action is from 2005, and this cover just looks like a fucking porno. Holy fucking shit! This cover just looks like a. Post it in chat. Post it in chat. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Look at this cover and tell me that just doesn't... That just looks like a fucking porno. <laughs> that just looks like a porno. <laughs> Alright, you, you know what this means. Now I need to check the top-billed actors and actresses. 
Uh, the t Ooh, but it is from Troma. What? It's it's got the little Troma logo in the top um right hand Where's corner. Troma? Have you heard I don't of Troma? Know Troma is. Okay, have you heard of the Toxic Avenger? Yes. Troma are them. Oh, they these are the same guys that did the Toxic Avenger? Well, they're like same production company. Holy There's shit. There's a charming story you can find online about a woman who like rejected artistic tradition in her family. Like her Ah, uh, I'm probably misremembering this, so apologies to everybody who finds that I've bullshitted a story because I'm an idiot. Maybe I could look it up before I say it. I'm going to do that right this second. So Oh wow. Daughter of Troma. This, this user review is like gushing about this movie's this movie. So the review reads, in movies like Schizo Schizopolis, This is Spinal Tap, love that movie, and Dolomite makes you smile, and if you're a fan of classic rock, cheesy moog synths, and anything to do with ninjas, then this is the movie for you. Wow. This is like... Sun Ra was half right when he said space is the place. Absurdity is your first priority when you watched his movie. Every frame was crafted with loving care to be a boo movie bleh, to be a B movie exploitation regurgitation cult classic. Wow, this guy is gushing about these. Dang it, I'm trying to find it. Um... Monsters and Daughters. Fuck, I vaguely remember having found an article a while ago that was supposed to be about trauma and, like, one of the, um... I mean, let's just look at the to Toxic like, Avenger uh, real quick, as I can. What the fuck? Go away. Uh, yeah, the Toxic Avenger is, like... artistically... grindhousey, trashy... Yeah. Tra there, there's no way to describe that film without having watched yeah. it, other than, like, if there's anything that, like, about... I guess it just doesn't so much, like, push every boundary as, like, sit down on the other side of the seesaw and flip the boundary off into space or something. Uh, you, you, this, you know how I found out about the Toxic Avenger? Uh, there's a musical... <laughs> For the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, I've heard there's a musical. I nearly got went to see it, but I decided against uh, it because I wasn't too keen on the film. If you ever produce it and you uh, like send in, I, I heard this. Is a, I heard this is a rumor. Yes, I found it. I heard it is a rumor. Huffington Post. My dad is a horror cult icon, so I've rebelled by becoming an investment banker. <laughs> what? Rebelling is an adolescent rite of passage to Wait, adulthood. Like this? <laughs> Thirty years after his own coming of age, my dad was still giving authority the f finger. A teenager myself, I faced an existential crisis. How could I rebel against the ultimate nonconformist? <laughs> Wait, link this. Link. I want to see this. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, sure. It's a great article. Oh fuck! I'm gonna have to put this in the comments, aren't I? That's amazing. My dad's a sorry, brother becoming an investment banker. Unlike my dad, I wanted to fit in. Most kids hated uniforms. I embraced ours. In my navy skirt, I was completely indiscernible from my classmates. But then every time dad did something outrageous like dance around in a superhero costume, I very clearly became the odd one out. The weirder dad got, the more obsessed I became with being normal. And arms race and arms blossomed. Race blossomed. Dad made outsider B movies. I exclusively watch big budget romantic comedies. When dad posted a rant on his blog against devil worshipping corporate conglomerates, I applied for summer internships at SP 100 companies. <laughs> this is beautiful. 
It's amazing, and it's a really wholesome I story. I embraced the, the corporate world and all its mundane glory. Dressing up in a boxy suit each morning was exhilarating. I had joined the prestigious Moms and Dads Club, and I was sure it would drive my father nuts. But my father, but dad wasn't shaken in the least. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's really wholesome. Don't spoil it for anybody who wants to go and read it. Like, I've gone and spoiled 2035 Forbidden Dimensions secret trans plot twist. <laughs> trans allegory plot twist. It's not on screen, it's just the main character, like, dying on a quest to save an alien goddess. Who he will live on inside. I want to rewatch that movie now and I know I don't because the lights are like really horrible like I did not mention it but like there's some like low budget lighting effects if you have anything that can make your eyes go do lally that will like really make you uncomfortable or beyond uncomfortable if you're just somebody who's like photosensitive epilepsy or something yeah that film's gonna do you in <laughs> not even trying to soften then again it could be worse it could be the total recall reboot uh, have you seen that one which one sorry I, I was reading the article the Total Recall reboot. They rebooted Total Recall? You didn't watch the reboot of Total Recall? It has Brian Cranston as a supervillain. They, they did? Yeah, the evil corporate boss is Brian Cranston, and Bill Nye plays that guy who has an alien in his oh. chest. Except in this film, he doesn't even have an alien in his chest. Colin Farrell, Kate Beckinsale, and Jessica Biel. One of these names is not like the others. <laughs> like, Kate Beckinsale, Jessica Biel, whatever. I can see them acting in a Total Recall reboot. But, Farrell? I mean, I, I guess Farrell is known for weird fucking roles, so I guess it makes sense. I mean, his most well-known role is The Lobster. Come on. Come on. They got Michael Keaton in, um... What's it called? Um... They got Michael Keaton in the RoboCop reboot. Yeah, but Michael Keaton is willing to do anything nowadays. <laughs> he, he literally doesn't care anymore. The only time we will see Batman fight Spider-Man on screen. <laughs> uh, thanks, Disney. Oh my god. For some reason, the, the first recommended film is 2011's Cowboys and Aliens. I remember watching that movie. That movie was so fucking boring. <laughs> How on earth they managed to make James Bond versus aliens? Boring? It boring is Cowboys and me. Aliens. Oh my god, that was Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford. You didn't know that was Daniel Craig. I did not know that. <laughs> Yeehaw. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Budget was an estimated $163 million. Opening weekend gross in the USA was $36 million, with a cumulative worldwide gross of $175 million. That has got a fucking sting. Who, who made... Who produced this? Was it Universal? Oh, it was Universal. Jesus. That's got a fucking sting. Honestly, the graphic novel's better. For Cowboys and Aliens? Or Cowboys vs. Aliens? The graphic novel adaptation of Kraft, Cowboys vs. Aliens. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh, come on, there's a graphic novel adaptation of everything. Ah, that's fair, that's fair. So, like, um... I don't think Edge is waking up. <laughs> no, I know that Edge isn't waking up, so now it's just a case of how far do we want to just run this fucking joke into the ground and then just upload this. As I'll fuck off and get some sleep. I mean, it's whatever <sighs> you gotta. It's whatever you wanna fuck off and get some sleep. 
I don't know, like maybe when I get bored of I have moved on from sleeving Magic the Gathering cards, listeners. I am now painting the vampires of dubious sexuality that adorn a coven throne in Warhammer. I'm just saying it, but like when you've got a mother maiden crone trio going of like eternally youthful blood crazed vampires or whatever. In the all female cults of vampires. <sighs> you know, I really don't know anymore. Honestly, the lore is a mess since they blew up the planet and changed the setting to outer space. Outer space! But possibly through alternate dimensions as well. What are... <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that article about uh, the daughter of... Um... The guy who'd found a trauma, who had Tromaville, was actually really nice. That was like a really nice article. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Made my day when I read it a while yeah. back. I think I got it recommended on Twitter or something. Mm -hmm. My life has become a lot more interesting just... since i started twittering i'm just more. gonna jump from the more like this section on movies now and see where i go right now on a uh, hansel and gretel witch hunters from 2013 i remember wanting did you watch I remember that one wanting to watch this the same reason why i wanted to watch abraham lincoln vampire hunter or vampire killer <sighs> i wanted to watch both of those but i couldn't because like no one wanted to go so so you didn't get to watch either I didn't get to watch either of them Ugh, and you haven't even been able to just, like, pick up Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter on, like, streaming or Is something? I mean, I don't think about this enough. Yeah. <laughs> eh, I don't have to. It's usually on UK television at some point. It's just like, yeah, I'll set that to record. Okay, Hansel and Gretel Witch... Yeah, I'll set that to Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. That's how I got to watch yet. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. Is it any good? <laughs> it's... Soundtrack... Is really cool. <laughs> I'm forgetting who it's by. I need to look this up. Hansel and Gretel. Uh, Wait, I've got Spotify open. Yes. So Spotify, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Because I know there's one track that I find to be a bit of a banger. Okay, so it's by Atli Orvarsson. I have no idea who that is. Um, the track is... Shoot anything that moves. Nice, nice. Wait, I think... Hang on, I'm just gonna swap. I've got, like, a bajillion playlists. Okay, I want to look at uh, The Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and I remember watching this movie when I was a kid, but now that I'm looking at this fucking poster again... Is that Jake Gyllenhaal? I'm gonna check this. That is Jake Gyllenhaal. Wow. Oh, it gets better. It has Alfred Molina as a man who sells ostriches. <laughs> ben Kingsley is in this. Yes, Ben Kingsley is the villain. I don't know who the female co-star is. It's a very white Persia. <laughs> Why the fuck was Jake Gyllenhaal in this movie? <laughs> Alright, uh, let's look at Jumper from 08, because I remember seeing ads for this. Um, but you haven't watched no. Jumper. There's a lot of movies. Now, see, I have a friend that loves Jumper, mostly because it's a teleporter and they're really into teleporting. But Hayden people. Christensen is the star, is lead. Yes. Huh. Sa it was his big lead film after... Samuel L. Jackson was in this movie. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson's the villain. You've never seen I've Jumper. Never seen Jumper. Oh. You don't know that Samuel L. Jackson's the villain in like ninety percent of films these Th that he's days. in. <laughs> Miss Peregrine's Home for Wayward Children has the most like Samuel L. Jackson nonsense. Like 
he has an expository rant where he complains about how many eyes he had to eat to become human enough again to start doing Ooh, experiments on fuck? people. It makes sense in context. He did an experiment when he, where he accidentally turned himself and everyone he was doing the experiment with into monsters with knives for hands that looked like Slenderman if Slenderman liked to eat eyes. What? And was invisible unless you are really special. Okay, I'm going to look at I Am Number 4 now. Uh, the, I have never seen trailers for this movie, but I'm looking at this poster right now, and it says, uh, from the produce, from the director of Disturbia and producer Michael Bay. So you, I know I'm in for a good time. My brother called it the most garbage film he'd ever That's seen. Amazing. And my brother... Is this the actress for Luna Lovegood? Like... I don't know. I have uh, only oh heard second oh oh accounts of this. <laughs> Is it then? Edge is awake. Edge is awake. Uh, Diana R. Agron. Give me half. Oh, cool. Then tell Etch to get the fuck in here. We're gonna actually start this shit. It's not. No, we're gonna get like five minutes of Etch <laughs> in this fucking call. It's, it's not the actress for Luna Lovegood. It's one of the actors from. Oh Italy. fuck! Okay, I am so sorry, y'all. Can you give me half an hour? Oh my god, we're gonna treat our <laughs> listeners to so much of this shit. <laughs> Etch, I want you to understand that when you said that you weren't willing to stay up till three a.m. to interview me, I was. <laughs> I was. Willing to stay up for this long. Oh my God. I am going to be in a state of fucking zombie life tomorrow. I am going to break my one rule, which is not to have coffee at weekends in order to function at all tomorrow for like, I don't know, like half an hour of going down to my local gaming club and laughing at everybody that thought we were going to play Brawl. Alright, so now I'm looking at Wrath of the Titans. It, it, it's the new Magic the Gathering format. Nobody was, likes it. When you it. said Brawl, I thought you were like... I was gonna be like, y'all bring a fucking Wii U. <laughs> no. No. So, like, uh, you know Commander? Yes. Commander is played with all the cards ever printed. And... What's, uh... See, the thing is... That means that you're gonna be... You, you can use the same deck for a few years... For, like, your entire life, or whatever. If you've got a commander deck you like. Wizards of the Coast try to build Brawl, which is like commander, but... You know, you use smaller decks, and you only use cards from the most recent few years. But then... So you need to buy yeah, new well, Brawl decks. What's the point? I thought, okay. Well, that's the thing. It's a whereas Commander is a game format that was designed by fans, and so you know, fans like it and stuff. It's designed to be fun. Brawl is a format that was designed by Wizards of the Coast, and they want to sell product. I mean, Wizards of the Coast sells Commander stuff to you. <laughs> but funnily enough, they don't actually control the ban list for some reason. Okay, now I found, uh... I think... I found from the producers of 300, Immortals, released on 11 11 11. Yeah, Immortals. I did, um... So, like... When I used to do more podcasty stuff, I ran a thing where I just talked for 9 minutes and 47 seconds about a given film. Nice. And Immortals was one of them, because I did all the films that came out in that era about Greek myth. Because you had, in the same span of time, Immortals, Clash of the, Titans, of the Titans, and Percy Jackson's. Yeah. But this... Clash the Titans and Percy Jackson coming out in the same fucking year. This is like both starring Perseus and fighting Medusa. It's a pretty fucking like expensive cast because I guess this was before Cavill got big, but Henry Cavill's here in this. Yes, there is a lot of shirtless Cavill. Yeah, I mean he looks good without it. Uh, Mickey Rourke is like, in this. Immortals is such a. I would not recommend Immortals to people. 
I mean, at the same time, Immortals is very visually pretty stylized. It's weird. Apparently they take all this labor to like make it look like Renaissance paintings, and suddenly I want to go back and look and read up on the art. But at the same time, I'm like, you watched this film, you hated it. <laughs> you thought it looked really ugly. I I'm just looking at the people who played the gods now. Uh, I don't recognize any of them. Who was Luke Evans? He played Zeus. So he was in Dracula Untold, Beauty and the Beast as Gaston. Oh, he's Shaw. Wait. He's from Shaw? Fast and Furious. What? Fast 6, Shaw. What? That's... Is that right? Yeah, I don't watch Fast and the Furious. Uh, my uh, pretentious film school friend tells me that Fast and the Furious is one of the best movie series he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> Uh, I'm just not that interested in Vin Diesel outside of, like, Riddick. Which, ironically, is the film series where Vin Diesel is encouraged to be the most pretentious sounding. <laughs> and it doesn't really work. <laughs> because Vin Diesel can't really do pretension. Alright, let's look at Jack the Giant Slayer. Uh, from 2013. I remember so many commercials for that. Directed... I don't remember people saying it was as fun as... Well, I don't remember anybody saying that what's it, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters was fun. But honestly, like, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters is fun because, like... Imagine... A f Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters is the kind of film where escaping from, like, the gingerbread castle as a kid has left... <laughs> It's uh, Hansel with diabetes for the rest of his life, and he needs to take keep taking insulin shots or he'll die. And this is in the medieval era, where that's like some creepy potion that nobody knows what it does. So to the rest of them, he's taking like some magic drug that spares him from the sugar sickness. Ewan McGregor is in Jack the Giant Slayer. What the fuck? Hello there. Ian McShane is in this movie. Oh my god. Okay, uh, let's 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 jump one more time. Where are we going? Uh, the Huntsman, Winter's War. Isn't this the? That's the sequel. That's the where se they throw no, this in is the story before Snow White. It says. Oh, it's the prequel what to Snow the White. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's the prequel, I think. Yeah, no, that's what it says here. This is, uh, it says, the story before Snow White. With, uh... Isn't it about how the evil queen stopped to be, wasn't evil to begin with or with something? Chris Hemsworth and Charlize Theron and... It's... What? Emily Blunt, Nick Frost. These are, like, fucking expensive Yeah, you need Nick Frost, because he's one of the dwarves. Yeah. What? <laughs> you... <laughs> Which I guess makes Simon Pegg an elf. You know how I knew that uh, <laughs> Snow White the Huntsman was going to be a fucking shit show? Because it said, from the producer of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> uh... Oh, but I like the Alice in Wonderland. I saw it in seventh grade as part of the, o the only field trip I ever took in high school. Or whatever school that was considered. You poor, poor <laughs> The thing. only field trip I ever took. No, one of the two field trips. The other one was to visit the Lowell Mills. But that was one of the two field trips I ever took. Uh, we saw that movie, and then it came out, and I was like... <laughs> visit the what? Uh, the old old textile mills in Lowell, Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, we had to learn about uh, child labor laws. Because <laughs> they exist. I forgot Kristen fucking Stewart was Snow White. <laughs> How do you forget because that? Because the last thing that I, I associate with her is um, uh, MK Ultra or American Ultra. That was like the the last thing I saw from her. That that's like the movie I associate with her the most is MK um, American Ultra, which was a fantastic fucking movie. It was made by it was written by Max Landis, who is fucking insane. <laughs> Uh, 
Should I know Max Landis? Um, he is known for doing a lot of comic book related stuff. Uh, and I think he's also really well known for... Well, he had he had a lot of like scandals involving him, including allegations of sexual misconduct. But I know him for a rant. Not a rant, an, a video essay he did on Superman. Yeah, and he was son of John Landis who... Yeah, son of John Landis who, who directed the Blues Brothers. Which is... What's the thesis of his Superman essay? Because I think I've heard maybe of I, this. Let me, let me find it. Uh, the Death and Return of Superman. That's what it's called. It's not, it's not really like an essay. It's more like a short film. It's a parody film. Okay. Yeah. Uh... No, see, I was getting it confused with like... Somebody had done... Um... A long-winded uh, thing about how, like, Quentin Tarantino's Superman scene, I'm trying to remember the one from Kill Bill 2, is written by someone who's never read a Superman story, apparently. It's like, no, no, he, his idea of what's it, Superman is Clark Kent, because he's fucking from a farm, you dumb <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's called The Death and Return of Superman, released uh, in 2012 on YouTube. Oh, Matt Landis also wrote Chronicle. I forgot about that. Um, Chronicle was nice. Friend of mine really... Well, same friend of mine What's is really into Chronicle and Jumper. Uh, here's the amazing thing about The Death and Return of Superman. He got some, like, A-list actors in this fucking movie, like Elijah Wood playing Cyborg Superman. <laughs> and uh, Yuri Lowenthal playing, um, s like, some random person. Which is, in which is amazing, because, you know, most people will be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's, let's jump one more movie. Let's keep jumping. Uh, these are all the same recommended movies. They've been. You know what? Let's just jump to John Carter. Jetty, for fuck's sake. Let's jump to John Carter. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. John Carter, Man of Mars. Oh, someone pinged me? What? Oh, idea bouncer. Also, my list of my brother's like cinema disappointments. Was. He hated having to watch that in cinemas. Really? Why? Called it boring. I don't know how you can make a film about, like, a man who leaps miles on the surface of Mars. He's reverse Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. He goes from our world to a shithole where he's basically God. Who is... John Carter is played by Taylor Kitsch. Uh, he is known for X-Men Origins and Battleship. Okay. Wah, wah. Uh, Tron Legacy. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now and then. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, guess what? You're live on fucking camera. Oh, wait, no, you aren't. Well, I mean, unless, like, your voice magically gets carried over the other side. Okay, for everybody, Jetty's just shown up with, like, the Thanos voice, so I'm gonna stop my recording now, too. Cool.